Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name's Dr. Claire Killingback and I'm a senior lecturer in physiotherapy. And in this video, I'm going to talk through the main qualitative data collection methods for you. So the main methods, really there's, there's three of them. So there's interviews, there's focus groups, and there's observation, which can also be participant observation. Now there are lots of other methods available. For example, you could collect information from documents, from diaries, archives, blogs, etc. But in this video, I'm just going to talk about the main three methods because they're the ones that will come up most often in the research papers that you're reading. So the first main method really is talking about interviews. And when we talk about interviews, we are most often talking about semi-structured interviews, which are carried out on a one-to-one -one basis. And so that's when participants are asked a series of predetermined questions. And you come up with those questions, um, basically guided by the literature, the research question, you know, what it is you're trying to find out. So you would have a literature review guide, which would guide that interview. And what you're trying to do is seek to understand those participants, so their views, their experiences, their beliefs, beliefs, their attitudes on a particular topic. You would pretty much always digitally record those interviews because you, you're going to use them for your transcription. So they become the data that you are then going to go on and analyze. Very often now it's done online simply because that's just easier for participants because you don't have to travel uh, as much. So, so that's interviews, which is probably one of the key ways that we collect data with qualitative research. The other way that you'll read about is called a focus group, which is really just, it's a group interview. You will typically have six to eight people and the group is asked about their views, their experiences, beliefs, perceptions, attitudes. So all the same things that you would do with an individual one-to-one -one interview about a particular topic. And you're trying to create these really open lines of communication across individuals because you're trying to get that dynamic interaction with a group. So the people are bouncing off each other. So you get a bit more depth and um, yeah, just you're just ex exposing people to different viewpoints as they talk. And then sometimes people will change their views and add. So you get really rich data from doing focus groups. They can be harder to organize simply because you have to coordinate a whole um, lot of more diaries to try and make that happen. And it can take a real amount of skill to be facilitating these because often if you're in a group, you'll find there will be some people who will dominate, who will be talking more. And then you'll have others who will be really quiet and won't necessarily be contributing as much. But as a facilitator, you're trying to hear everyone's views. So it's that skill of making sure someone who is more dominant still feels heard and they can share their views, but such that they don't take over the conversation. And it's about how do you draw out those quieter members of the group so that you can get that full, rich breadth of data. Uh, again, they will be um, audio recorded so that you can transcribe them because as I say, that will go on to be your data for your qualitative research. So focus groups can be really fun to do. Um, but yeah, as I say, they have some more logistic challenges with them. And then the third main method I want to talk through is observation or participant observation. And this is important because often what people say they do and what they do can often be quite contradictory. There can be two different things, can't they? So observation is a great way of just cross-checking that subjective reporting. So this can take place, really, you want to do it in that really natural setting. So you're going to the location to collect that data and you're trying to understand the bigger picture stuff around the physical, the social social, the cultural, maybe even the economic context in which you're collecting the data. And you're trying to learn what life is like for an insider. So someone within that group or setting, whilst actually as a researcher, you're tending to be an outsider. So for an example, I use this for my PhD. And I, I got my PE kit on and I went to different community based group exercise programs uh, for older people. And I joined in with those exercise programs and I did that over a period of about six to eight weeks. And initially I started out as the as the outsider because people were, were quite wary of me and they were like, oh, why is this person here? Why are they joining in with um, the exercise class? What well, what is it they want to know? But actually, by the end of the six to eight weeks, I became more of an insider because I got to know the people and hear their stories and and share with them. So actually, you become really privileged when particularly when you're doing that participant observation as a technique. What you would then do is you would write lots of field notes. So you would go and join in, do that participant observation or your observation, write down all your field notes in a diary or type them up in a Word document. 
And it's those field notes that then become your data that you then go on to analyze. So that's participant observation. So as I say, there are lots of other methods of qualitative data collection, but they're the three main ones that you'll come across in the literature. So I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.